It's called blackmail, Jessup. First you robbed this man's house, you killed two women. Then you've got the gall to try blackmail. Hey, Daddy, hey, you don't have any proof. We'll have it as soon as we search your apartment, which you're going to do right now. Colombo, Duffy, come with me. We'll need one squad car. Commissioner, I believe we're going to need a warrant before we can search that apartment. We've already got one. You want to check it? Yes, sir, that's fine. I think you're making a mistake. I'll prove you I'm not. All right, take this man down and book him. Mr. Caldwell will give you his statement. Let's go. Commissioner, I believe you're making a mistake here, sir. Sir, I don't believe Jessup could have killed either of these women, particularly your wife. Don't be ridiculous. I saw it, I tell you. We threw her in the pool. There were other witnesses. You bring the keys up, please. Run away, huh? Yes, sir. Sir? You're on his way up, Commissioner. Thank you. Sir, I realize that your wife appeared to die in the pool. Actually, she died in the bathtub. What are you talking about? Right this way, please. Right this way. Yes, sir. Room 13. Traces of soap. Duffy, check that bathroom. You get the kitchen. You see, sir. As soon as I saw the body, I knew right away something was wrong. You did, huh? Check behind that stove. Get under the sink there. I knew something was wrong because of her outfit, what she was wearing, the tear in her dress. You see, I had asked myself the question: Why does a woman go to an important testimonial dinner knowing that her sleeve is torn? Got a whole closet full of nice clothes. So the one thing that I knew: she was not on her way to the dinner when she was drowned. So now it follows. She must have been drowned earlier. Now I find out about the soap. That places it in the bathtub. You see, a couple of hours before her body was dropped into the pool, somebody drowned her, and somebody dressed her. The medical examiner's report set the time of death at 7.30, Colombo. Yes, sir. But that was based on your eyewitness testimony. Now I spoke to him. He said it could just as easily have happened a couple of hours earlier. All right, suppose she did die in the bathtub. So Jessup surprised her and killed her. He dressed the body and threw it in the pool to make it look accidental. So no, sir, that's not possible. Hit that radio. You know why? You see, the bathroom, the bathtub, the faucet itself, everything was bone dry, including the towels. Not even slightly moist. That was the first thing I checked, sir. No, she had to have drowned before six. Maybe even before five. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been that dry. Long before Jessup got there. As a matter of fact, just about the time that you came home for supper. Commissioner, I believe you killed your wife. And I believe you either killed Janice Caldwell or you're covering up for it. You just lost your badge, my friend. Come on, come on, keep digging. Yes, sir. At first, I thought Mr. Caldwell was responsible, but that didn't work out because of the nightgown business. And then the next night when your wife was killed and you had that terrific alibi, then it suddenly hit me. You were in it together and you're trying to blame Marty Jessup. And the truth is that Jessup was nowhere near either house either night. Commissioner. He wasn't, huh? All right, how do you explain these? Janice Caldwell's jewels. I can explain it. You took them from the Caldwell house, you hit them, and today you planted them here to incriminate Mr. Jessup. You're crazy. You can't prove anything like that. Sergeant Randall? Here, sir. You.
Commissioner Halpin says he found those jewels under your mattress. <clears throat> That's crazy. You're a liar. Hey, I don't even live here. What? I can verify that. He doesn't live here. I live here. These are my shirts. That's my underwear. It's my brother-in-law. It's my nephew, my niece. I haven't lived there long. Just moved in. You see, the apartment was vacant for three weeks. I just signed the lease. You looked in the closet. Those were my pajamas and my bathrobe. The file folder, the, the report on the desk. Yes, sir, I'll have to take responsibility for that. You see, I persuaded Mr. Jessup to telephone Mr. Caldwell, knowing that Caldwell would contact you. I was sure that once you knew the true identity of the burglar, you'd try and incriminate him. So this morning, very early, just after I signed the lease, I made up a new file folder on Mr. Jessup. Everything was the same, except this address. Only one person beside myself knew this address. That was you, sir. Just one more thing. 